So tell me how the idea came about for the Drawing Goths series that you're doing. It's it's weird because it started, it was like this very definitive spark moment of not knowing what the hell is going on in the world with mm-hmm. the pandemic hitting. So that was a very global thing that everybody was going through. And then for me, I had been seeking help for some like mental health issues and I thought I had ADHD basically Okay. Um, and things were kind of getting kind of worse as far as being able to keep track of my life and my projects and just jumping from one thing to another without, without even realizing that I had left what I was working on and I'm all of a sudden I'm in another room and I was like kind of going off sometimes and like uh, barking at people like strangers for not good reasons, you know? Okay. So it just wasn't good. So I sought out help and I was finally able to like get a diagnosis and get medication. And it turns out I just have like depression and anxiety and that can cause very ADHD symptoms. It can be kind of six of one, half dozen of the other for people. Like they're not sure uh, one can go with the other. So what happened is by like just getting meds basically and a low dosage of, of Prozac, all of a sudden I was able to like focus on a thing oh. and enjoy drawing in a way that I hadn't in like since basically since I was a kid, you know, huh. uh, these illustrations and all these gigs and these projects that I had been working on through my entire adulthood, sometimes it'd be fun, but a lot of times it would be like kind of stressful. Like I'm worried about like, what people are going to think, or is this going to turn out good? Is there going to be proof that I suck if I finish this? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of unneeded anxiety wrapped up in the art making. So once I was like medicated, I was able to just like relax and enjoy myself and have fun drawing. And at that same moment, there was this lockdown. I couldn't do the Amazon t-shirts anymore. I couldn't even do the books for a while because um, they were just focusing on sending out like food and diapers to people, you know, to make sure that people could still get those things. Yeah. So they they like shut down all the extra print on demand stuff. So I was like, I'm not going to make any money for a while. We'll be fine. You know, luckily Amanda has a job and does the uh, vintage stuff that didn't, that never slowed down. The clothing was doing fine. So I was like, you know what? I got a moment to uh, just enjoy drawing and kind of reset. Uh, I've always loved drawing out of old yearbooks. Um, there's just something about, I mean, they're not celebrities. We don't know who these people are. Mm -hmm. And there's just this grid of all these faces looking at you. And they're so small that you can just instantly see the differences of people's faces and heads, you know, and their hair and, I just love, it makes me giggle like the way, oh, you've got a, like a little forehead and you got a big forehead and your eyes are <laughs> together and your nose is big and your chin is little. You know, everybody instantly looks very different on almost like a cartoony level. Yeah. And so I just always love cracking open these old yearbooks from that I have from the 60s and uh, 70s. I found one that was uh, just Shriners, so it's like old white guys <laughs> you know, <laughs> with their fezes on okay. through – So I would just draw faces, and there's no money in that. It's just to enjoy it. And then I was like, oh, I'll make Skillshare classes. I had been wanting to make a Skillshare class, but I had anxiety. Every time a camera was on me, I would get really uncomfortable to where, like – Really? Yeah, to where I was, like, making – I would always look – I wouldn't even notice until, I mean, I didn't know that I was uncomfortable, but when I watched it back, I'd be like, oh, God, I look like I'm going to throw up. I would just be making these faces like I was just so miserable. So I was like, if I'm going to do this class, i got to get on camera more. i got to have like a lower stakes thing that I can do every day. So I started doing these little cheap chills show snippets on my Instagram Mm -hmm. to where I would just talk about, posters that I had done or, or whatever, just to get used to being on camera. And at first I had to, my friend Paul Frederick, he's a great cartoonist uh, over in North Carolina, he texted me and said, you should, you should like cut out a picture that makes you like smile or, or makes you laugh and cover that 
you know, make a hole and put it on the camera. So I found, I don't even remember who it was now. It was like a cereal box with a stupid face on it that was just silly. And then I had like a picture of, uh, I got a picture of the Dr. Smith from from Lost in Space. Nice. doing that. The pain, the pain. <laughs> so ridiculous looking. And I was like, that always makes me laugh. So I would just look at that instead of the lens of the camera. But okay. you can't tell the difference. And after a couple of weeks, I stopped relying on that. I didn't need that anymore. And I just kept doing it. And then it turned into um, drawing the, the yearbook people and looking out, looking out for, like, the oddballs, the nerds, the rockers, and, of course, the goths. Mm-hmm. Because that was kind of who I always knew most about. I kind of would run in those circles and go to those nightclubs mostly. That's what I like to dance to, you know. So as far as knowing about that subculture, that's always kind of been – my kindred spirit. Um, so then I started seeking out the goths and just drawing them. And I was still kind of fixated on the idea of making a yearbook of just goths. Right. And then I started like showing my process and drawing that on Instagram. Uh, and then I just suddenly it clicked. I should, you know, I was getting so frustrated by the way, at every turn of like, I don't know what to do. I don't know why I'm doing this. I just feel like I have to. Mm-hmm. I already started picturing like a new look for me for some reason to be on camera. Like you can be like you're more yourself if you're a ridiculous looking character. You know what I mean? I like it. It fits the aesthetic though. That's what I love about it. That and the red curtain. Like when you first started, when you say you were nervous, let me say I've been seeing your stuff since you started out. I did not see that at all. What I saw is like, wow, dude really went full in into video. Like you had the setup, you were getting new equipment. You had new, you were trying out different mics each time. Like you were really, I'm, I'm like, he's amping up to do something when yeah. I saw you doing it. I would make these videos where I'd be like talking to my friends. I never even sent this video to anybody, but I was like, just talking to my friends. Like, why am I dressed like this? Why did I set all this up? <laughs> I bought like a VHS camera that I still want to implement. I figured out how to use a VHS camera as a oh. webcam which is pretty cool. It really? looks better than the web. Yeah. Huh. Uh, so I want to get involved in that stuff, but yeah, I didn't even know why. I just felt like I had to. And I felt like if I focus on goth culture and I, if I have like a new look or whatever, it won't matter if I look miserable. Mm-hmm. I can look, I can be myself miserable and be on camera on purpose. Right. <laughs> 